Hi, my name is Bob Grinier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. Today I took a look at the titanium that was treated with the Amasa gas and then pushed against the uh, polytetrafluoroethylene sheet. Uh, and uh, this is the spot where um, there was what seemed to be an explosion. And uh, I looked at this area alongside some of the other areas that we've seen in previous videos in the Omar uh, video list. So uh, the first thing that I will point out is uh, this is a kind of typical uh, uh, one of the impressions. And uh, I've got two shots of it. Now because these were at 90 degrees to each other, uh, I will point out that uh, on this side, uh, it is this side that's facing this. And on this side, it's this side that's facing this. So this impression here uh, is uh, what, where this face was uh, up against this side of the PTFE. So there's a titanium on the right, obviously PTFE on the left. And uh, uh, you can see them both together there. Um, so yeah, there, there's uh, some effect going on. Uh, whether this is from this particular event, I don't know, but this looks like it's a similar depth, uh, kind of similar depth. And if we actually look at all of them together, all of the cuts into the PTFE, uh, I have them all on this uh, particular image. And over here on the right, this is where the 10 yen coin went into the PTFE. Uh, this is the cut we've just seen, which I guess was one of the first ones. So uh, you can see it's here, this little little impression uh, here. This is another one, this is another one, uh, and uh, we can maybe refer to the video to find out which sequence these went in. Getting shot, don't I? I'll put it on the ground there so you can push against it. Right, don't burn my hand! <laughs> that should be 800 Ds. That, the color temperature of what you're looking at there is 800 degrees. And it's not... <laughs> oh! Well, that's interesting. That's, a, that, that's carbon exploding. Oh no, he's cut a hole out of it. What? But this one here is the uh, one where there seemed to be this explosion. And you can see that it is <laughs> extremely different from the others, uh, at least on this side. Um, so the others are kind of like, you can imagine that the, the, the hot thing was pushing down on here, pushing down on here, pushing it down on here. And there was some radiation on, uh, as it went out. Uh, of heat or, or whatever and uh, it cut these V shapes and this is wider, much wider than the coin uh, this is wider than the uh, actual titanium sheet but you can probably imagine that the titanium, titanium sheet is as wide as the base here in fact this is actually I think 2.3 millimeters wide and the 10 yen coin uh, at this point between this point and the blackness and this point uh, uh, but I guess it might have been coming in at an angle and the 10 yen coin is 1.5 millimeters wide so um, you, it probably because it was coming in at an angle it, it gave a, uh, a bigger sort of uh, impression mark but what none of these others have uh, which this does uh, is these kind of like go down to a point but they're, they're fairly dead end points this one has the dead end here but it has this whole area here of material that's just completely removed and it and it, it it doesn't have any sort of burning oxides on it or whatever like all of the other ones do um, uh, it just has this whole area which is quite deep which is just totally removed almost like instantaneously it also has this broad area around here uh, and I don't know if the camera's ca ca uh, capturing this, but you can see it on the images uh, that will be in the uh, link to the video. 
that there's an iridescence here that almost suggests there was titanium vapor deposited on here and in fact they they produce these beautiful sort of uh, uh, quartz crystals that have uh, titanium vapor on them uh, uh, with their various thicknesses of titanium oxide and, and it produces these kind of like iridescent uh, quartz crystals uh, you can go and have a look at those online, like t titanium quartz or something. It's like that. Uh, they have some special name for it in that sort of field. But anyway, so I'm going to look at where how this compares to the actual uh, uh, region of the um, uh, titanium. And here we have it. And so actually what we're looking at here is the reverse side. So this is the side where a whole chunk of it seems to be scalloped out and this is the other side where it's actually reasonably similar there's there's still a bit taken out here if you look still a bit taken out uh, but not quite as dramatic as the other side now um again because these are at 90 degrees from each other uh this uh here uh was this side and the other side where the material uh is scalloped out is actually where we have uh, this more intense radii here. So you can imagine the, the PTFE may be a slight angle. There was an angle between the, the uh, metal and uh, the uh, PTFE uh, as it was being placed down. Um, uh, and uh, it, it, you can see that you know this is like the the mouth of the bay as it were but the, there's an extra bit that's kind of come out of here and this is the actual sort of impression you have here which is not what you see here and this is where I, I showed you in the initial image uh, over here you can see this little dimple corresponds to uh, this one um, uh, it's actually there and you can see that whatever happened here pushed material over that one so you it had this affected main affected area here it's not this one that's further up uh, main affected area here. in fact I can sh show you I think it's it's still on here yeah so it's this one corresponds to this one but uh, uh, this is a <laughs> I mean if it was a blast uh, it was quite quite impressive and uh, it seems to have kind of like a, a core radii here and then there's another kind of radii around here. But um, uh, you can look at these at your leisure. So this is uh, that side. Uh, and so what you're looking at is this affected area here is the affected area on this side. Um, and we go to the other side and we have this. So this chunk out here, this big bit here corresponds to here. Now, I, I don't know if you can imagine it, but is this depth corresponding to this? Or is was the depth just this deep? And 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 if the blast happened, did, did, it, did it just drop down? I guess we need to look at the video or was somehow it burning out at that time? But th there was an instantaneous event and uh, this is very different from the, the nature of all the other uh, areas. And so um, now there's, there's another thing that um, actually, if you recall and, and go through and look for uh, Lion uh, or O Lion Nebula, um, it's actually in the Sochi uh, presentation. Um, but what we find actually is in systems that seem to be related to Lena, uh, when they cool down, they produce pure crystals of whatever the material is. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter what it is, it fi finds a way to, to make these minimum energy structures that are um, uh, beautiful, beautiful crystals. So in the case of Lion, it was these beautiful dano crystals of uh, uh, nickel. And uh, in Parkamov's work, he found uh, tungsten uh, crystals and um, uh, aluminium oxide crystals, but the, the most perfect crystals you can imagine, like you would want them in your crystal collection if you were into that kind of thing. And the, the interesting thing is we see something here which uh, uh, points to that as well. Um, what we have is, if we imagine the blast was here, if there was a blast, <laughs> um, uh, or maybe here with the, this ra radius here, if there was a blast, um, it's interesting at this point, it's kind of like midway between the sort of area here which is changed. It, like you've got one region here and then you've got another region here. Um, kind of midway between here and here, there's this area here. And if you look into that, um, 
it's absolutely stunning. I don't know if this is catching up, but like I say, you will have the um, the images to look at at your leisure. So he he here it is. This is the same as this area here. So I've zoomed into that and uh, we can zoom into it here as well. And so you can see this, this really is quite stunning. And uh, what I did is I moved uh, the uh, microscope to get a, a better angle at it. And so I got this. And when you look at this, uh, uh, it's quite, quite stunning. And uh, the interesting thing is, is it's it, in the other kind of burn marks that we had um, uh, with the titanium, which uh, I have in the packaging that was it was supplied to me here. These, there is absolutely nothing like this, nothing like it at all uh, in this. And I have another sample that was done on the first day. There's nothing like these rich deep i mean this is this it, it's actually a reasonable amount of depth uh um these what appear to be uh, just beautiful beautiful crystals and it may be that they are pure titanium crystals uh, and the interesting thing is is that the, the clue is because titanium is the rainbow metal as they call it um we have these various different uh, colors down here which would imply that you know um uh the titanium was forming these crystals and uh, uh, down here these uh, had time to oxidize more or if you look at the titanium uh, color chart for for uh, oxides uh, on it maybe you can work out whether the gold is the thicker or the, the blue is the thicker so we, we know we can work out uh, when what occurred in terms of the point of crystallization did it crystallize from here outwards or he here downwards uh, I suspect it's from here outwards but anyway the, the, the interesting thing is is that this area if this is titanium uh, uh, dioxide ie white in sort of like a, a smooth kind of slag around here why did this area form these perfect crystals and not just more of the same of these uh, this sort of, if it is titanium uh, oxide, uh, just blobs, uh, why is this whole area here, these near perfect crystals, and because of the way uh, the colors work on titanium oxide, these oxide layers, uh, in theory, are not very thick. They're very, very fine, you know, because if it gets very thick, it ends up white. <laughs> so, how did this particular area form these beautiful crystals? And they didn't just all end up looking like the same thing. And why is it that this is not in here? Now, is it just the, the nature of some sort of explosive shockwave? Maybe if you've got molten titanium in air and you had it next to a, a you know, an explosive, you would end up with bits of crystals that look like this. I don't know, but the, you know, in in the lion experiment, when the perfect nickel crystals, like more perfect than is you can find anywhere in the world, uh, under extremely clean room conditions, um, they were forming just by themselves. Um, now, okay, so it was, it was a reasonably high temperature, uh, uh, one thousand fifty degrees, like not even at the melting point of nickel. But uh, why? Why? And, and the interesting thing about that is again, those crystals in the lion reactor formed in specific corners of the diamonds but not in other corners of the diamonds and in a line like almost it was aligned with the magnetic field and, and in uh, Parker Moll's reactors his uh, uh, tungsten uh, would appear I think tungsten cerium crystals um, they they were forming outside of the main area and uh, uh, you know that was running at a higher temperature, so maybe it's some sort of vapor deposition and, and so forth. But this must have formed near instantaneously. Um, I, this really confuses me. I'd like everyone to get their thinking caps on and try and find an, a, an excuse, a plausible explanation for why you would get such perfect crystals forming at this point, um, you know, as part of a an explosive event um you know and w why you know didn't it just do more of the same like it, it's done everywhere on 
the normal kind of Mars gas burn throughs. Why why has it done this? This this, this is what really confuses me. So uh, a, a number of things we need to explain. Uh, one is, you know, this is the normal mark. So you've got a slight change in, in the look of the PTFE, it kind of becomes uh, slightly different under uh, specular light. And uh, there doesn't seem to be much effect with the titanium. It does seem to be where it's in contact with it. There seems to be some interaction going on. It, it doesn't look just like smooth metal to me. Um, um, why, why when there's nothing other than something hot, maybe something just hot, uh, burning into or, or interacting with the... Um, PTFE in all of these different instances, this one being the, the uh, bronze of mostly copper, uh, uh, 10 yen coin, this being three other impressions by the uh, uh, titanium. But this is so different, it's so different. It's got this going on, it's got this region around here. Um, uh, on one side, like I say, this is the side that is this series of areas of marks and uh, this side, where this massive amount has been removed, uh, it's got this, uh, you know, um, maybe that's just what it does. Uh, uh, you know, if you got, if you could get pure titanium powder and, and mix it with pure PTFE powder, I would just simply would not re recommend it. Uh, there was a video that was shared where uh, it was uh, two other elements. Uh, mixed together and there was kind of like a, a very vigorous uh, reaction and and so you know maybe that just is what happens uh, but for me I still don't understand why these crystals are here and it seems to be a pattern that if if a material can form a crystal if you know with with Parker Moss, uh reactor where he had crystals it would appear there may have been some transmutation going on Really looks like this transmutation going on in line where they had uh, near perfect crystals in uh, Hutchison. There seems to be the crystals even on the surface of the material uh, uh, of material uh, of elements that were not there supposedly in the starting material. I suspect this is just titanium, but why has it formed these absolutely beautiful crystals? I don't know. Uh, help me. Um, and here's just a close up uh, on the. Uh, blast zone and you can see it's just clean as a whistle it's just like it's been ripped out of there like sublimated uh, but not in a way that left it you know charred uh, it's just liquidized <laughs> uh, almost in instantaneously liquidized um, and so get your thinking caps on uh, someone tell me why these crystals are formed. Um, thank you very much for your time. I'm just going to use the scroll wheel to uh, look through the focal plane of these crystals here. And so you can see the kind of context uh, it is and the depth. Very lovely.